I got there a bit early and got to sweeping off my newly poured concrete, but I was really doing some last minute thinking about where the well should go. Factors to consider range from the ease of hookup now, to constructing around it later and eventually living with it. The well drilling crew from Cribley's arrived and we settled on a location that they could access. First they positioned this large pan to recycle the drill water. They fill it with fluid from the second truck. Let's stop and look at the drill bit. In this case, they used a 9-inch tricone bit. It's probably overkill for my sand, but it got the job done. As it turns, the three roller cones rotate to break up and scrape away material, as water is pumped in through the shaft, both to cool the bit and to push the debris out the hole. You can find an animation here. They started things off without water, but then soon pulled the bit up again and added the spout to direct the drill fluid into the recycle tank. Sand and gravel settles out in the first section of the tank, and the cleaner water flows over to the hose that sucks it back into the truck and down the shaft again. If they didn't recycle the water, it would take a huge swimming pool's worth, and it would make a huge mess. After they get this first piece in the ground, it's time to add an extension. This big wrench comes out of the back of the truck to hold the lower portion still. And then the operator runs the drill backwards slowly for a moment to loosen the end piece. Then he pulls back the wrench. I guess it wasn't loose enough in this first case because he ended up pushing the bit against the bottom of the hole to keep it still while he unscrewed the drill. Then he adds a bit of grease to the threads. raises it up to the top of the mast. That big carriage rotates to position the next 20 foot shaft section. The rig screws itself in loosely and then another wrench moves in place to help tighten it. Then the new shaft is moved back into place above the previous piece. The lower end is threaded in and then tightened with that hydraulic wrench. This process is repeated 20 feet at a time over and over. In my case, it was nothing but sand for the first 116 feet. Then they hit gravel, and it made a lot of noise, enough to bring me out of my mobile office to see what was going on. That only lasted about four feet, and then they were back to sand. My neighbor, who lives higher on the hill, came to check it out and told us that he hit water after only 117 feet. However, my well didn't reach water-bearing fines until about 185 feet. At nearly $16 per foot, that difference adds up. Then they began the process of pulling out the drill bit, piece by piece, back onto the carousel. The next step was inserting PVC casing into the well to keep it from collapsing in on itself. The first piece, the well intake, was special with perforations to let water in. The rest were just 6-inch PVC tubes. They glued one into the next and then pushed it down, repeat, repeat, repeat. The 6 inch tubes in a 9 inch hole left some space around the outside. They inserted this 1 inch diameter white tube into that space and pushed it down to just above the water bearing layer. Once it was ready to go, they started pumping bentonite clay down into the well. As they did so, they pulled up the white tube. This effectively filled the gap around the pipe with clay that would hold the pipe in place without letting water flow up around it or sand it down into that water bearing fines layer. Done drilling, it's time to pack up. They estimated that my well was producing about 50 gallons per minute. They'll send a different crew to dig a trench and run the water to my mechanical. 